You are listening to the Anxiety Podcast, where we support you to overcome anxiety and reduce stress. We will get vulnerable and it will be real. Here's your host, Tim J.P. Collins. Hello and welcome to the final Anxiety Variety of 2015. Uh, this is uh, the last one of the year, obviously, because it is the 31st today, and uh, no doubt you're all out there prepping for your New Year's Eve celebrations. Um, but I wanted to make a quick podcast today, kind of covering a few of the major milestones that happened for me this year, and the topic of today's anxiety variety is Courage Kills Anxiety, uh, and I'm going to talk a bit about some of the things that happened for me and uh, some of these things I've talked about on on previous episodes of the podcast. So there may be a wee bit of repetition, but it feels like uh, this should be the last one of the year is just to kind of recap on, um, you know, some of the big changes and look forward to some of the, the continuing big changes for 2016. Um, in terms of uh, stuff to take care of, the five-week course is launching in February, so we've got about a month now before that starts. So if you do want to start overcoming your anxiety, if you want to start getting into some of the ways that I help people overcome it, um, that's all going to be in the course. And if you want more details, just go to the website, anxietypodcast.com. And on the right-hand side in there, there's a box which says five-week course. Click on that. I've made a video. It takes you through the whole thing, and you can find out what it's all about. Also, if you're interested in one of, let's say, one of your New Year's resolutions is to be less anxious, um, I do have some space available for one-on-one coaching. If you're interested in that, when you're on the website, you can just click on the coaching page, have a little read of that. You can book a call with me and, uh, you know, subject to availability, book a call, and we will have a chat and see what you're up to, and see if one-on-one coaching is a good fit for you. Obviously, when it's one-on-one, it's much more personal, it's much more specific, and we get right down to brass tacks about changing your life and you being less anxious, essentially. So let's talk about courage kills anxiety. Um, This is fairly easy for me to say that 2015 was without doubt the biggest year of my life. Just pause and soak that up for a minute. The 2016 was the biggest year of my life. Um, and the reason for that for me was that I did the most uh, things that scared me, right? I, I, I leaned into um, my anxiety. I leaned into taking massive action on, on changing my life or doing bold things, which I, I wouldn't have done in the past, Um my anxiety wasn't really at in the last year, hasn't been kind of a, a major theme like it was when I was having panic attacks and I was anxious all day, every day, a number of years ago. But um, it's still there in the background in terms of stopping you taking really big action and taking really big risks. I was, I was still, although my anxiety, I'd, I'd overcome a lot of it, I was still playing it fairly safe. So what did I do to change that? Well, I started to realize that in order f- for me to really, um, not necessarily kill my anxiety, but for, in order for me to really start making a difference and really take control of my life, I had to do things even when they were extremely uncomfortable. Um, for me, that was, you know, not, not, uh, sugarcoating it anymore, you know, and just saying to people, the reason I left my job and the reason I changed my life and I did all this stuff is because I had anxiety and panic attacks. And now I want to start supporting other people to do the same, right? I didn't want to keep just going through the motions. I wanted to not only, you know, fully own my situation, but start enabling other people to do the same thing. So as as cheesy as it sounds, kind of putting it out there on Facebook and telling my friends, my family, people who never even knew I was anxious, that I had all this stuff going on in my life was a big step for me. And um, massively scary, writing that post, clicking the button and, and putting it out there to the world. I didn't know how people would respond. And obviously in that situation, you think of the worst case, what happens in reality, people respond with a lot of love. People respond with, you know, you're very brave for saying out loud. You're very brave for, for putting it out there in the world. So that was a bold move. Um, 
starting this podcast, starting this conversation with you. Again, would anybody listen? Is anybody interested? Who knows? But yesterday or when I looked a couple of days ago, the podcast has now had over 100,000 people download it or 100,000 downloads. So again, just another wonderful example of me wondering whether my voice mattered or anybody would listen because anxiety is there in the back of my mind thinking, oh, nobody really cares about you, Tim. But in reality, 100,000 downloads, right? Not bad. It's not not taking over the world. But in in our little niche of anxiety and being stronger and recovering, I'm extremely happy with that. I'm over the moon with that. I couldn't be more happy. So um, I'm going to say thank you again at the end, but thank you now for listening to this. Thank you for supporting me. It makes a massive difference. I realized that when I let anxiety make decisions in my life, that I didn't really move very far forward. I would stagnate. I would stop. I would have a lot of weird dreams about my life kind of not moving forward. Um, and so anxiety will, you know, will definitely slow you down. It'll definitely keep you in the same place or going backwards for as long as it possibly can, right? So the courage kills anxiety theme means that when you stand up for yourself, when you put yourself out there, um, even when it doesn't go 100% right, because I've done a lot of things which haven't gone 100% right, but something just supports you. There's kind of extra air under your wings when you're willing to step forward and be you know, somebody who's willing to, you know, challenge the system a little bit or say something bold or protect yourself or, you know, just do something. Um, and I see this time and time again now with clients I work with, um, when they stand up for themselves in the face of adversity, in the face of criticism sometimes, because they know that it's right for them and they know that's what they should be doing. And they're not letting anxiety make the decisions for them. Then they start to see growth. Um, and that is, you know, that, that is, as I, as I kind of said before, courage is like a muscle. Um, the more you use it, the stronger it gets. It's kind of exponential. So when you can be courageous in your life, whether that's as simple as saying no to somebody because they've asked you to do something so many times, you just don't want to do it anymore. Um, that's being courageous. And the more you use it, the more you see some of the the benefits that it can bring you, then you'll be more likely to, to implement it again in the future. Anxiety encourages the opposite of courageousness. It encourages, you know, the hermit. Let's regress into our shell and never question anybody or authority or say anything different to anybody else. So I'd like you to start thinking about it for 2016. Um, where in your life you can be more courageous. And I'm going to think about this myself as well, so who knows what I'll come up with. Um, but is it your job? Do you need to go into your boss and say, look, I, this project you've given me isn't for me, and I love this part of my job, but I don't love that part. Have you just been coasting? And one of the things that I learned in business was is that most people just accept the lot they've been given and they don't question it. But the reality is that if you're an employee that somebody wants to keep and you're doing a good job day in, day out, there's lots of flexibility that can be um, given to you based on your wanting to, you know, do different things or expand or whatever it happens to be. So don't just take things the way they are, question them. And as long as they're done in a professional, appropriate manner, then people are going to respect that. Um, I've, I've spoken to many people who've said that they'd like to cut their commute down or change the situation. I said, well, have you asked your boss if you can work from home one day a week or two days a week? It, do you have the type of job which awards you that type of flexibility? Well, I haven't thought about that or I don't want to upset anybody. And, and again, the, the anxiety in, in the back of our minds is saying that if we question anything, then we'll get fired. And the reality is, is that that is probably not the case. And if you are a good employee and people want to keep you, then of course they'll be flexible, if that makes sense. So yeah, do you want to work from home? Do you deserve a pay rise that you haven't been asking for because you're scared of what the answer might be? These are just some examples of being courageous and maybe they're not appropriate for you, but hopefully you understand where I'm coming from and just starting to question how things are. Maybe it's 
a relationship that you're in with a friend or a loved one or whoever and, and the person's been pushing their boundaries too much because you've been anxious and because they can take advantage of you. And maybe now you're just going to say, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not playing that game. Time to stop. Talk to somebody else about it because I'm taking care of me in 2016, right? Um, you've got to be ferocious about protecting yourself. You've got to be ferocious about protecting your boundaries because as I always say, that the number one person that you've got to take care of in your recovery is yourself. If you're constantly worried about what other people think or constantly worried about taking care of other people, then how are you supposed to get stronger? How are you supposed to improve? It's just not going to happen. Um, and, and another one which I changed, um, you know, now going back about 18 months ago now, but was where I lived. And for a long time, we just kind of said, oh, this is all right. And you kind of try and look at the glass half full scenario where you're like, oh, things aren't too bad and everything's good. But deep down, we knew that that wasn't the future for us. And we were delaying the inevitable of making a change. At some point, we just said, there's a better option and it's not that painful. So let's just do it now. And uh, then you get to see, you know, what's available on the other side. Um, For my wife and I, you know, making that move wasn't particularly difficult because we kind of, I, you know, she throws a bit of courage and I throw a bit of courage on top and then we're like, fine, let's just, we kind of wind each other up. Um, so, you know, are you living in the right place? Another great question. You know, the, the, the way the world works today with remote working and all of the opportunities that, uh, that we have, we don't have to live somewhere that doesn't suit us. You can make a lot of excuses about why you're staying in that place and why, you know, you have to be there because somebody else lives there or something else. But the reality is that you have a choice. So what are you going to do with that choice? You're going to be courageous uh, or are you just going to accept what you got? It's always, you know, everything's a choice uh, in terms of what you have. Um, And one of my notes I wrote down when I was putting this together was you can either take control of life or just let it happen to you. Take control of life or let it happen to you. And that's kind of the theme of what I'm talking about today is that, you know, again, on the last Anxiety Variety, I said New Year's resolutions were were a bit junky because people make them and then they forget them. But this isn't about doing something tomorrow on January the 1st about changing your diet or going to the gym one more time a week. This is about changing your attitude towards life changing the way that you live, right? And having some courage, which is like, you know, throwing water on the fire is going to make, is going to change your life. Um, one of the, one of the other things that I've, uh, thought about before is that there's always external reasons why we can't succeed. There's always external reasons why anxiety will be uh, a headline in our lives. Oh, this happened. And then there was a, you know, there was a, a car accident or something else, some other atrocity happened in the world. Um, we had an earthquake where I lived the other day, an earthquake, not a very big one, actually a little segue, but we had an earthquake, uh, last night or the night before on the West coast. And, um, it was like five on the Richter scale. I think, um, I was in the bathroom and didn't feel it. And my wife was in our bedroom kind of standing underneath the doorway. She was like, Oh my God, did you feel that? And I was like, Nope. Um, but yeah, then we checked on Twitter and I guess everybody in, in the Northwest felt it. So I'm just apart from me. Um, so there you go. Um, that's something that happened, but you know, we didn't, I didn't use that as an excuse to get anxious. I just said, you know, where we live, these things happen from time to time. And as long as, you know, we're aware of what to do, then that's the, that's the most we can do. That's just, you know, the choice we have. So we can't always control external things, but we can control how we react to them. We can control how we react to bad news, to people. It's not always easy. I'm not suggesting this is a walk in the park, but you do have a choice about how you respond to everything in your life. Um, And the final thing to say is that part of being courageous for me was, was having the courage to say no more frequently than I used to. I used to be a yes man. I used to be more of a people pleaser. And many of my clients that I work with, many of the people that I speak to, you, the listener out there, I know you're a person pleaser as well because it's just something that comes with the the territory of being an anxious person. We say yes far too much. So 
maybe one of the small ways to start here is that you start choosing yourself a bit more and you start saying no to things if they don't serve you in your recovery. They don't serve you in your bigger life. Um, so practice saying no. And, and by saying no more often, it allows you the opportunity to say yes when you have the chance for the breakthrough. Um, it allows you to say yes when you have a chance to do something bold, right? So a few thank yous. Um, again, like this was uh, something I did. Uh, I started this in August, I think, and now we're at the end of the year. Time absolutely flies by. But I do want to say a heartfelt thank you for listening to this. Um, and I just love putting it out there. I love being able to support you. And um, yeah, it's like I said, the best year of my life has been able to to start working on this type of stuff. So thank you for listening. Thank you for supporting me. Thank you for every email you send me with show suggestions or uh, feedback or questions or interaction. I love it. So don't ever think that your question's too small or too big. Just send me an email. Go to the contact page on the website. Send me a message through there. I love hearing from you. Um, thank you for every review in iTunes. Um, every time I look once a week or so, um, I used to look every day because <laughs> I was excited. Um, now I look about once a week and there's always a couple of new ones in there. And again, like I just thank you from, from the bottom of my heart for putting that in there. And uh, it, it means so much to me. My heart is full of gratitude now. And I feel the fullest I've felt in my life in terms of doing something which is actually contributing. Um, and without you listening and without you responding and without you engaging, um, none of that would be possible and, and uh, yeah, it, it wouldn't be as relevant. So that's all I have for you this week. If you do want to leave a review, then go ahead. Um, and if you do have an email, then send me one. If you've got show suggestions, I'm looking at new guests for 2016. If there's people you'd like me to speak to, then uh, get in touch and tell me about it because this is for you. So it's important that you contribute and interact and, and let me know what you need. All right. And remember, until next time, less anxiety, more life. Thank you for listening to the Anxiety Podcast. For more information, go to theanxietypodcast.com.